When wildlife vet Dr. Lance Mirabiri spots an elephant bull with an odd wound, he takes a closer look. What he sees immediately makes him call the cops. As Chiburu gripped the steering wheel of the battered four-wheel drive vehicle that served as both a field clinic and a mode of transport, it took effort to keep it steady on a road that was little more than a stony dust track. Chiburu is used to the inconvenience. His hands were steady because driving evenly was the least that he required of them. As a veterinary assistant, they were often lives that depended on the steadiness of his hands. Today, for example, Chiburu and Dr. Andy were on their way to a remote village to conduct one of their famous donkey clinics for the locals. For many of their clients, their livelihood depended on the health of their donkeys and few had enough money for vet bills. But as Chiburu eased the vehicle round a particularly challenging bend in the road, he found the way blocked by an unexpected animal patient. The elephant was a male in the prime of his life. He stood proudly, almost as a sentinel guarding the passage. But while he looked to be in good condition, Chiburu and Dr. Andy could not help noticing the large wound at the crown of this majestic animal's head. That did not look good. Picking up the radio phone that served as a lifeline for all members of the dedicated AWARE trust team, Chiburu called back to the base. We need Dr. Keith or Dr. Lance, he shouted into the phone, raising his voice to communicate the urgency of his message. They need to come quickly. There's an elephant bull on the road and he's injured. He needs help. Should we stay here? Chiburu then asked his partner. Dr. Andy scratched his head. Although he was a trained veterinarian with many years of experience serving at the trust, his main specialty was working with donkeys. But he also knew that if they needed to sedate an elephant, every able-bodied man or woman of the team might be needed for support. Yes, Dr. Andy told Chiburu. He was ready to serve. The assistant maneuvered the vehicle to the side of the track to clear some space for the wildlife vets who would soon arrive on the scene. Then they both got out and waited. The core team of wildlife vets were always on alert. They often needed to drop everything at a moment's notice and start working on their patients. But when the main team finally arrived, their first call would be to the police. If they encountered an elephant, most people would probably walk at a brisk pace in the opposite direction. But as they waited for the wildlife veterinary team to arrive, Chiburu and Dr. Andy closely monitored the elephant's movements. If he suddenly took off, they needed to be able to give directions. Although elephants were very much a part of the daily reality at the Trust Animal Sanctuary, Chiburu was still fascinated by watching the massive animal yanking at tree branches as if they were nothing more resistant than savanna grass. Within 10 minutes, they heard the distinctive rattling of another motor vehicle struggling up the track. The elephant too heard the sound. He fanned his ears out and for a moment, Chiburu feared that he would take off but instead, he merely shifted his thick legs as if to make way for the new arrivals. Dr. Lance took one look at the elephant and realized that he was in big trouble. Although he appeared untroubled by his injury, he could see signs of infection around the area of the wound. That had to cause him a lot of pain. No wonder he had ventured out so near their base. He must be desperate and actively looking for help outside his herd. With an expert eye, Dr. Lance made a basic assessment on the elephant's probable weight and the number of hands he would need on deck. Everyone, including Dr. Andy and Chiburu, would get involved in this massive operation. Darting the elephant to sedate him required skill and effort. Plus, it was a potentially dangerous job. The anesthesia used for elephants has to be a thousand times as potent as drugs used for humans, but that also makes it potentially deadly for the veterinary team. If the person darted the elephant were to ingest even the tiniest drop, it could kill them. But even under such difficult circumstances, that person still needed to aim carefully. They could not afford to waste expensive drugs on mistakes. Chiburu sometimes helped with the darting process. He had a steady hand, but today he would not be needed for this role, as one of the men who rolled out of the second vehicle was Peter, one of the best and most accurate darters. They were also joined by two of the trackers, Chuma and Masimba. In their role, these competent young guys used their tracking skills to help the tour guides with their daily safaris, but for this operation, they will follow the elephant bull until he finally succumbs to the dart. Just as Peter took aim, the elephant bull suddenly turned. Peter held back, in total control of himself. In this job, he had darted all kinds of wildlife from the back of moving vehicles or even from a helicopter flying overhead. Preparing to take that crucial shot, he swayed his body in complete concert with the elephant bull, trying to get an instinctive understanding of this specimen. He saw that the elephant was getting ready to walk off. 
Perhaps the arrival of not one, but two vehicles and more than half a dozen people was too much for him. At that moment, Peter released the dart and it flew through the air. Was it a little too much to the left? No, the dart hit the thick hide covering the elephant's flank. For a moment, the entire team held their breath. Would it stay there? Feeling that sting of the arrow's point, the elephant jogged a few steps. But the arrow stayed in place and there was a huge feeling of relief from Dr. Lance, Peter, Chiburu, and all the others. For Chuma and Masimba, the two trackers, there was no time to relax. They needed to stay with the elephant bull until he went down. Just as the trackers were leaving, a third vehicle arrived, bringing guides and also more veterinary assistance. Once that elephant bull went down, every hand would be needed. It can take up to 20 minutes for the elephant bull to go down, but in this case, the giant did not go far away. Instead, he turned to face the trackers, confident that they had his best interests at heart. He began to slow down and became groggy after just 10 minutes. Chuma radioed the medical team to keep them updated, and by the time the elephant went down, everyone was placed to move him into a safe position. They moved cautiously, checking first to be certain that their supersized patient was finally lights out. Now, the veterinary team took over, but as Dr. Lance Mirabini examined the head wound, he realized he needed to call the police right away. That was no ordinary wound. The shape of it suggested a human had caused it deliberately. Still, the surgery proceeded with the same brisk efficiency as any operation within a human hospital, but in this case, the theater was out in the open air, with a patient weighing more than 50 times as much as the attending surgeons. Once the elephant bull was fully sedated, Dr. Lance Mirabini took x-rays of his head, and that was when the terrible reality of his condition became apparent. The x-ray images clearly showed a deformed bullet wedged in his massive head. No wonder the elephant had come into the game park for help. After the trust he had displayed, Dr. Lance Mirabiri knew that he could not fail this noble creature. The bullet, which showed signs of having been there for at least a month already, was removed swiftly and safely. The vet cleaned his wound and then used a compound which would promote continued healing once the elephant had been released into the wild. He also discovered a secondary wound on the elephant's shoulder and this was treated in the same manner. The elephant's calm demeanor and his trust in the team greatly impressed Dr. Lance Mirabini. And that's when he knew that there was one more thing he could do for the majestic animal that had come to them asking for help. The Manipools National Park straddles the mighty Zambezi River near the northern border of Zimbabwe, and although that makes it a great place for large elephant herds to thrive, that also makes it an ideal environment for poachers to set up their nefarious business. Its remote location and close proximity to the border means that it's easy for poaching gangs to conduct quick raids across the border. Poachers seldom care about the pain and suffering they leave in their wake. Another possible explanation for the elephant's wounding could be a trophy hunting operation. While operators who run hunting excursions usually do have licenses for their kills, they are not allowed to operate within national parks, as these are protected areas. Unfortunately, professional hunters are often aware of the proximity of wild animals near national parks and sometimes use that to their advantage. Or the elephant bull could have simply been in the wrong place at the wrong time. An important element of conservation is the monitoring and management interactions between humans and wild animals. Human encroachment has been shrinking the natural habitats of animals such as elephants, and when people and elephants get together, there's often conflict. In a way, it makes sense. An elephant such as this large bull can easily destroy a farmer's whole crop in a few hours. That's why conservationists have adopted a new strategy of fitting elephants, particularly herd leaders such as old matriarchs, with radio collars to track their movements and prevent potential hardships. By knowing where an elephant is, conservationists and community leaders can work together to intervene and prevent damaging interactions. But if this elephant bull had been the victim of one such interaction, the intervention came too late. When Dr. Lance Mirabiri took a good look at the elephant that came to him for help, the placement of his head wound suggested that, lucky for him, the person that attacked him had not been able to get an expert shot in. If the bullet had been just a fraction to one side, it would have pierced his brain and most likely killed him. But then there was the shoulder wound. What did that mean? Had the unknown person with the gun tried to get a second shot in while the elephant fled the attack? When he prepared her report about the incident, Dr. Lance Mirabiri added all these observations. After the successful surgery, he was both tired and relieved. The operation had gone well. Now he needed to add one more thing. His patient needed a name. 
Looking at his overall condition and his serenity, he named him Pretty Boy. As the veterinary team returned to their base, they discovered that they had visitors in the form of Grace and Mudiwa, two operatives from the Akashanga Anti-Poaching Unit. They had been sent by the police officer who had taken Dr. Lance's call. The two women rangers had many questions for Dr. Lance. They wanted to know whether they had any prior experiences with this particular elephant. They spent some time with the two trackers, Chuma and Masimba, who showed them where the elephant was first sighted and where it had finally succumbed to the tranquilizer dart. But there was something else they wanted from the men. Starting at the point where Chiburu and Dr. Andy had first encountered the elephant, they determined where he had come from, and the answer surprised everyone. The team at the Aware Trust were familiar with several elephants that had been identified and studied for research projects, but this male elephant was unfamiliar to them. He must have come from a considerable distance away, leaving his herd and friends after the terror of having been shot. The two rangers from Akishanga then shared information from other investigations in the area. They had reported poacher activity along the lower part of the Zambezi, finding another elephant bull who had not been as lucky as Pretty Boy, in the body of a female elephant. They also transferred two orphaned elephant calves to a sanctuary further south. They were on the trail of the gang responsible and suspected that Pretty Boy might also have been one of their victims. Dr. Lance Mirabiri thanked him for their efforts, but then one of the rangers, Grace, made a special request. She wanted to see Pretty Boy. After those two poacher kills, Grace said that she wanted to look into the face of a survivor. The veterinary team felt heartened as they led the two visiting rangers to meet their latest victims. Pretty Boy was conscious, but still groggy from his procedure. When Grace saw him, she said, that is a very good name for him, he is beautiful. After the surgery was concluded, the team documented all the identifying statistics of this elephant. This knowledge could then be shared with researchers who studied the behavior of the elephants and also other wildlife facilities in the region. The next time someone encountered this particular elephant, they would know his history. One of the challenges of serving the medical needs of wild animals is that there is most often no opportunity for aftercare. Once the animal wakes up from the anesthesia, it has to be ready to be released back into the wild. Unlike pet dogs and cats, it would be unlikely that an elephant would return for a follow-up consultation. And tracking that elephant in the wilderness was simply not practical. An elephant can cover up to 200 kilometers in a single day, and in a week, Pretty Boy could potentially have crossed over to another country. But even here, this clever bull surprised Dr. Lance Mirabiri. While the team expected him to return to his prior home, he chose instead to stay near the people who had saved him. Following his surgery and successful recovery, Pretty Boy had been sighted by numerous visitors to the Manapools National Park, as his scar had made him a fairly distinct character, and he never fails to impress anyone with his tranquil demeanor and his gregarious attitude. We can only imagine the incredible pain Pretty Boy must have suffered before the vet treated him. He later told the media that he was completely astounded by the calm manner in which he approached him, without showing any fear toward humans. This is even more remarkable considering the fact that all of his pain and suffering had also been inflicted by humans. What an extraordinary story about a wild animal that put his trust in a human being. Do you have a story about an animal that approached you for help? What did you do? Let us know in the comments, we would love to hear from you.